Hello everyone, welcome back to Formal Intelligence. Today I'll be discussing many techniques that you can use to reduce the complexity of designs in your formal runs. Formal verification is a powerful technique that can help you reduce, help you ensure that designs are correct and reliable. However, it can also be complex and time consuming, especially for large and complex designs. There are a number of ways that you can use to reduce the complexity of designs in your formal runs. These are broadly divided into three categories, basic, intermediate, and advanced. In the last video, we covered one basic technique, which is called parameter reduction. And in today's video, we're going to discuss three other techniques, which are cut pointing, black boxing, and symbolic variables. So when do you know uh, you need to address the complexity? These are the symptoms. Your tool starts crashing, mostly because of high memory use, or in your property table, you see certain a set of undetermined properties even after you run it for let's say two three days and if you start to see undetermined preconditions even after the such, such, such long runs then you surely have a problem of complexity like i mentioned at the beginning there are three categories basic intermediate and advanced and in the basic category we have multiple approaches that you can use for complexity reduction one is a parameter reduction technique that we discussed in the last video please check out if you have already watched it but if you have not watched you can still continue watching this video where today we will be discussing three different under constraining techniques black boxing cut pointing and the use of symbolic variables i'm skipping the parameter reduction for now now let's discuss the concept of cut points Cut points literally mean cut the signal out of its driving logic while doing formal verification. If you are using Cadence of Jasper Gold, you can use the command stop it to do it in the tickle. Other tools like VC Formal from Synopsys also have their, equivalent, their own equivalent commands. Cut points are really helpful in removing the driving logic of a signal when you really don't care about the value of that signal for your target verification process. Let's, like, let's take, uh, take a look at such an example. Let's say you're verifying the block uh, data transporter. And let's say you are checking whether the, whether certain data in at the input of the block data transporter reaches the output data out when expected. You don't really care about the value of the data in, but you just want to make sure that whatever data in comes at the input reaches the output. So this is a typical case where you can disconnect the data coming from the data generator and drive the data in of the module data transporter freely. Now data in is free to take any value. Please note that uh, the module data generator still exists in the design, it gets elaborated and the other values like data enable are still driven from the block data generator. Now, let's say you don't really care about the end module data generated at all for verifying the data transporter block. Here you can do something called black boxing of the block data generator so that all the outputs coming from the block are freely driven, freely driven and not only the data part of it. Black boxing simply means removing a module or instance of the module during the formal run. Compared to cut pointing of signals, the key difference in black boxing is the fact that black box module will not be elaborated and all the outputs instead of the certain cut pointed outputs will be driven freely during the verification runs. Tools like Jasper Gold will allow you to black box all instances of a module or you can choose to black box certain instances of a particular module based on whether you use commands like bbox underscore m or bbox underscore i. Now let's look at the, look at the previous example itself. After black boxing data generated block, which is shown in gray color here, all the outputs are freely driven. It is shown using red cross marks here. When verifying the data transporter module, you might not care about the data in going into it, but you still might care about the value of data enable. Let's say the value of data enable should have stayed high until data ACK is received from the data transporter. Uh, when you had data generated block, in the design when you did not have black boxing <clears throat> that block made sure that this rule was obeyed now now that you don't have the data generated block it can take any value at any time and even keep toggling at every clock 
Now this will lead to false failures when you do the check <coughs> that ensures that the legal data in reaches the data out of the data transporter block. <coughs> These false failures can be overcome by adding an assumption or constraint on the free signal <coughs> data in. You can, for example, you can say that data enabled should stay asserted until data ACK is received. It can be coded uh, as shown in the next slide. It can be coded as shown in this slide, in the last line of this slide. Um, and but the drawback of cut pointing and black boxing is that you don't, if you don't add relevant constraints like the one we just saw for data enable, you'll end up debugging so many false failures until you come up with the necessary constraint for the signal which are driven, which are undriven now because of either cut pointing or black boxing. The third techniques are the use of symbolic variables. Symbolic variables are additional undriven inputs that you can introduce in your formal bench. This helps mainly in two different scenarios. One, reducing the number of checks if your design has symmetrical elements. If you use symbolic variables when the design is not symmetric, the design will, the runs will be less efficient. It might take a longer time to prove or come up with a counter example. That's one of the drawbacks of using symbolic variables. Now the second use of symbolic variables is to introduce non-determinism in your checks to make it more generic and ensure that it covers more scenarios. You can implement it by simply defining a logic and then adding necessary constraints on the symbolic variable as required. Now let's see how symbolic variables can reduce the number of checks in symmetric designs. Let's take the previous example itself, except that now we have n such structures of data generator and data transporter blocks. You would like to verify all the instances of the data transporter logic. How would you do that? A straightforward way would be what you see on the left hand side. For the time being, let's not worry about the signal sampled out in the antecedent of the property. Let's just assume that there is a modeling logic that will ensure that sampled out is a single clock pulse that goes high when you should be expecting data in that was sampled at certain point in the past to appear at the data output. This check ensures that the value of data out when sampled out is high is indeed the data sampled at certain point in the past. Now we have n such checks to verify for all those n data generated data transporter pairs we saw in the previous page. How can symbolic variables help here? If you look at the right hand side, that's how. Define a symbolic variable called symbolic ID, as you see on the first line. It can take any value from zero to n, but it should stay at that value for a single formal run. It can change when you relaunch the tickle again, but if you don't, it shouldn't change. This will be enforced by what you see uh, on the second section where you are ensuring that the symbolic variable stays stable <coughs> using the dollar stable keyword. Now the third part is the actual reduced property. Using the symbolic variable, we reduced n checks and we now have just a single check and which does the same thing that the n checks did. And the property checking time usually improves when you use symbolic variables to generalize properties like this. Now let's see how else you can use symbolic variables. So the second application is introducing non-determinism for your checks. Let's go back to the case where we, we had just one data generated data pair block. We would like to introduce, we'd like to randomly pick a data in value and see if it comes out of the data out when it is expected. We can use symbolic variables to ensure that we are picking the data in randomly and not end up picking only the first, last or a particular data in the middle. The symbolic variable called a sim underscore sample can go high any time during the formal run. Unlike the previous case where in, in the application one, we ensure that it stayed stable throughout the formal run. That's not the case in this application. Let's say that the transporter already got a data transporter block already got 10 data packets 
out of reset <clears throat> and then the symbolic sample goes high so that means we are going to check the 11th packet then the next when the 11th packet comes that will be tracked by your formal model <clears throat> let's say that sample out is going high exactly when the 11 packet comes and then we have another we have a certain logic for sample in that will be driven accordingly after the 11 packet came and then we have a, another logical sample out which will which is driven by a certain logic that depends on sample in and the sample out goes is a pulse signal that goes high when the 11 packet is supposed to come out of the data transporter block so in this assertion when sample out is high the data out should be the data in sample which is the 11th data packet that went into the data transporter that's how symbolic variable can help now in the next run this x sim sample might go high maybe on the eighth packet or for any other packet so when you generalize it you're technically checking all the packets so these are the two different applications of symbolic variables so today we discussed three ways of complexity reduction by under constraining the designs one cut pointing two black boxing and third the use of symbolic variables there are many more complexity reduction techniques that come handy when you don't find these techniques really helpful let's look at them in the upcoming videos real soon the topic that we'll cover in the up upcoming sections are these intermediate complexity reduction techniques which are case splitting and different abstractions and advanced ones like checker decomposition assume guarantees and then use of waypoints and then buck hunting techniques I would really love to hear from you about the complexity reduction techniques that you have found most helpful. Please share your experiences in the comments below. I would also like to take this opportunity to remind you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Formal Intelligence. I'll be posting new videos on a regular basis covering a variety of topics related to formal verification. Thank you for your time again. I look forward to hearing from you soon. See you in the next video. Goodbye and thanks a lot.